right here all right i'm trying to like i'm trying to like give him i'm trying to okay so we're it's about time for our um debate arena with um john doyle fan um so we have to uh I have to make sure that he does i'm trying i'm trying to give him the rundown of not using any slurs okay i'm trying to I'm trying to tell him no no slurs here is this important give him the rundown in the queue uh he's gonna be calling me directly so you can't so you can't give him the rundown in the queue um anything else that i missed i missed um i i already talked about the slurs the f word and the r word already um anything else that uh that's important that we need to touch on bones straight is a slur yeah you can't say straight T slur? Yeah, no no T slur either. Um I think he should should get that one. Yeah, we can't we can't be messing with those memes. And no N word with soft A either. I'm not gonna be saying the N word here. Personally. I already went over the the, uh, the F word R slur. The B slur? Biscuits. Beans. Yeah, we can't uh we can't do that one. Hello. Yo, what up, man? Not much. What's good? I'm doing all right. I okay. checked out a couple of your stuff, honestly, I gotta say. It's not bad content, to be fair. Appreciate it. So wait, so who are so who are you, okay? So you said that you were from the uh from the John Doyle rap video, is that correct? Yes. So who were you in that video? The one that looks like a uh, stick bug. Whoa, dude. What the fuck? Why are you uh, putting down? Did I, did I bully you in that video? <laughs> no, that's what someone in the comments said. I thought it was funny. Okay. I'm trying not to uh, demean people's looks too much. We're all kings here. Um, Very true. So, um, okay. So you said, did, are you fine with just audio? Did you, you said yeah. you, you're really, okay, cool. All right, here. You watched the video, you found it. How did you find it? I honestly, I found it. Someone put it in one of my discords. I have a, I have a NoFab discord. Someone put it in there like a month after you uploaded it to YouTube. Okay. It just popped up in the recommended. I don't know how, but interesting. YouTube's I, weird like that sometimes. I mean, you guys watched on John Doyle, right? So I would imagine that um, since it has Doyle in the title that you guys would, um, oh, it has Doyle in the um, metadata. So I imagine it'd come up right Yeah. Now. Maybe. I mean, it could be that, or maybe it was the implicit. Maybe it was just because they watched like the video itself. I don't know if you had the Dame Sped Gang and metadata or not, but that might be in there if it was. I don't think so. Um, okay. Oh, maybe God sent it to you himself. So true. So, um, you said you wanted to talk. What you? What, uh, what's on your mind, bud? What do you? What do you want to talk about? Really, I just want to understand opposition more as a as a way to strengthen either my views or realize where I'm wrong or whatnot. I don't mind talking to people that are opposed and you seem to have a good knowledge on generally what you think rather than what, like there's a lot of people I'd like to engage with, but they don't know what they think. They just listen to what other people say and then do that. But you seem to have your own ideas. So I like to talk those out. Sure. So you named a couple of things in a, um, in uh in your message to me that you'd like to talk mm -hmm. about which uh which one is a uh, more, more most prescient to you that you think is uh, worth hashing out um i think it's very vital that the like often we when people do debates they like talk about they talk about things as, as if we're both in like the same moral view and in actuality i'm assuming you have more of a subjective view of morality would that be fair um my my view of morality is uh, uh a little bit more complicated than uh than just that as as uh, someone who's personally religious myself um but I don't okay. debate my religion on stream. Would morality come into question or no? Um uh a bit in in my own like personal um 
in my own personal actions. Okay. I guess my question would be, as a society, what would be, like, what would make you think that we should, I guess, progress to new moralities that we didn't accept before? So you're asking what morality set should we have that we haven't had before? Yes. Um... Um... Uh, taking care, taking, making sure that you take care of people who are uh, less fortunate than you in our uh, hyper individualized, hyper atomized society at the moment. Um, people are often, especially in a capitalist society, often uh, taught to taught and conditioned to care about themselves. And a lot of the times, it even ends justify the means where you can step on, you can crush, you can um, uh, you can destroy the lives of, of as many people as possible. But as long as you're at the top rung of society where you want to be at the very end, then that was sort of worth it because you climbed the ladder and you used the system and that makes you smart. Um, and at the end of the day, the amount of dollars in your bank account um, tells you how successful as a person you are. You tell you um, can listen to a lot of conservatives say, especially neocons say um, things along those lines where um, like, mm -hmm. especially, especially like Charlie Kirk, I live like a capitalist every single day where um. Yep. And uh, his uh, his great story of uh, meeting his wife that seems like a like it would be for any other person a a quick trip to the to human resources. Yeah, I think I imagine there's a lot of similar critiques we'd have with a lot of neocons and capitalists, but probably for maybe different reasons. Um, it's definitely, I, I I tend to think that more so that there is a level that capitalism has failed to instill moral values that we want because. Capitalism is just markets. Markets doesn't always push something good. And the uh, idea that people are rational enough to like stop consuming something and then have that interfere with the markets and make people or like influence how companies decide things and what they do, it's just not true. I mean, like the go woke, go broke message is just not really true. I mean, in all, in all honesty, if like if these conservative like influencers, if they really cared about their cash possession more than morals and they'd probably just start pushing a more centrist viewpoint even though they were a more liberal viewpoint so i don't really understand that um th i mean this is just the way that just capitalism works what it well for one mm -hmm. capitalism is is not just markets there are other systems that have markets um but uh this this is just like capitalism at work this is just like what it what what it does is that um companies just pander to um what what'll make them to the most amount of money that are just that's just what they do okay and you spoke earlier about the idea of like the individual or in individual individualistic society are you hyper individualism pro, are you pro hyper individualism or no no okay that <laughs> i'm not either so that's good <laughs> You say what? I, I'm definitely not either. Um, okay. Uh, my thing is, I think this is something we both acknowledge, is that definitely the idea that you are like your own person, your own home is a lie. I mean, it's, it is. The way you conduct yourself um, normalizes things for society. And this could be something strategically benefited for either side. Maybe one side wants to um, do something in their own home to normalize something, or maybe they want to push against something in their own home to denormalize or like have something not become of norm. So let's say something with like um, something such as tr transgenderism, the normalizing it of your in your own home would have its effect on society. And both both sides should acknowledge that, but there's a lot of neocons that are like, uh, like, like the li a lot of liberals are like good you do in your own home and they're praising it so it has that effect on society because they went normalized and then like the the right should be put against it to not have it normalized is my opinion on it well there t well is this what you want to dive into uh being trans yeah cool um i don't see any real problem with people being trans it doesn't really affect people um doesn't affect other people um, you're living your life in the way that you see fit and it doesn't seem to uh, harm society in any meaningful way that uh, anybody's been able to um, that anyone's been able to demonstrate 
Um, it mostly just seems like people just uh, really don't like trans people because they're like, ah, ew, icky, and for one, and then pull some like massive conspiracy theory out of their ass to imagine that trans people are part of some massive cult to make your kid gay or something. Um, and even and even the term that you keep using that you've used several times so far, transgenderism, like it's some sort of ideology or thought process, is um it's just it's just very telling of uh, the um the sort of thought process that um especially conservatives go through, um the lengths that they go through to try to uh, justify being mean to someone based on their identity. Well, wouldn't judging someone or wouldn't like casting against saying judging people for their choices is bad? Wouldn't that be a push for individualism, saying that you can make your own choice and it won't have an effect on society, that you can be liberalized from society and you can be free, it, from, free from its restraints, and you don't you can ignore what society is saying? Isn't that like individualism? So you're saying I'm I'm pushing individualism by saying that people shouldn't care what society thinks in some capacity. I mean, yeah, the, the liberalization of societal constraints is individualism, the autonomous individual. Um, okay. Um, I do. Okay. So I, okay. So I understand what you're getting at. Um, for one, it is a form of individualism. Everyone is an individual. Um, and I believe everyone should be able to make the choices that they see fit as long as they're not hurting other people. That's why I am a libertarian. Um, but, uh, but, but to the extent, as I said, specifically hyper individualism, um, neglecting the, the fact that you live in a society for one society, um, and so your actions do affect people and that you should be helping. We should be working as a group together. That doesn't, um, that doesn't change. Actually, the individualism of you being able to uh, live how you want and other people accept you as that, as long as you're not hurting other people, is actually uh, uh, strengthens um, bonds between people, um, as shown as in diversity actually builds bigger bonds between people over time. Okay. So there's a couple things to unpack here. I'm, right, I'm writing down some of your key points so I can better understand this. All right, so all right, um, so one of one of the things I would say is that, um, do you do you view gender as different from sex? That'd be, I guess, one of my questions. Um, it is scientifically. Okay, well, why do you preface this to be true? Pre well, preface it to be true. Well, for one, um, gender and sex refer to, um, especially especially in the social context, two very different things, um, and they're dealt with differently in psychology and biology. So this seems like it's important to. It's important to distinguish between the two, especially how complicated American, my bad, how complicated human psychology is. I mean, it is. It's very, it's very important to define things in tune with like nature and not define things wrong. We don't want to live in a dysfunctional society. So I think we both have a common end goal in that. Maybe I don't know. Maybe you think I don't. I don't know. But <laughs> um, my question would be: Do you know like? where this idea came from or why do you like believe it to be true would be my question like that who gender, is it that is with that gender and sex it? are two different you're things? saying that like you're saying that like it was like biolog biologists and neurologists like which one specifically would be my question oh like, like are you asking me to bring up specific biologists and spi I'm, I'm asking you why do you accept it to be true or why, why? do you trust in those authorities would be I my trust question in those authorities because they're for one um, there, um, because we have a system put in place, um, that, that helps us understand the world. Uh, I am not a scientist, I am not a biologist, nor am I a psychologist. So because of that, and someone with limited resources, uh, to be able to research things and also study things, I can't really study things myself. Um, you have to put some faith in some things. Everyone does this and that's what the system is meant for, um, and all you all you can do is just um, take research that other people have done, and you have to um, cross research and get all other um, uh, uh, understand that. Make sure that they uh, did their scientific. Um, uh, sorry, they did the scientific method correctly, and they put their studies through correctly. Um, make sure that you get um, peer research studies. Make sure that you have uh, um, second, third, fourth. Um, what is it? Um, opinions on the on the topic 
and understand that things can change. That's like just the best that you can do. So with that knowledge and going through research myself and uh, speaking to some doctors, especially since I've uh, gone to psychologists and um, therapists before, it seems like this seems to be the most correct thing. All right, so I just really wanted to get like your to understand your views, make sure I wasn't missing you on some things. So let's dive in more deep. Um, the intricacies of like gender being severed from sex, right, is what I believe to be the idea of complete individualism or liberal liberation, liberalizing yourself from your own nature, that of being a man or a woman, which was normalized by Simone de Beauvoir because women need to be separated from their womanhood in order to be liberated so we liberated gender to make gender like roles and then the idea was instituted that roles were not created by your sex that roles are societal so i'd question what makes you think that someone born a man can perform what um many people on maybe my side would uh define as like someone born as a man what what makes them able to do the capabilities of what someone on my side would have defined as the capabilities of a woman. What are the capabilities of a woman? I guess that is their societal role set. I guess your view would be that we're defining. Well, well, those societal roles are ones that we just invented. There's no, there's no women wear frilly dress, dress jean. Men, men go to, men go to factory jean. Um, this 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 just uh, just doesn't really happen. If you want to talk about people being closest to um to like their their nature, um there are many there have been many societies all throughout um history and time that uh, have um that have had uh, that are way closer to nature than we are now, especially talking on computers, that uh mm-hmm. have third genders, fourth genders, um the people who you would describe as men, people who you would describe as women doing different things in their societies work out perfectly mm-hmm. fine. Um I, I would then why just, were they I would conquered? Just, where they? Why would they wait? If I sneak into your house and kill you, does that mean just that I'm just better than you? It depends on which society that happened. I mean, society not all that happens were in? Really, not not all societies believe, were really like sneak attacks. Um, I don't believe the worth of a society uh, is judged by how easy it is for to, for them to be killed. Okay, that's fair. But my question would be that when its functionality be like, if people are at their strongest point of nature, would be when they are like able able to combat the most. So why would they then be conquered? Would be my question. Well, it depends on what you mean by strongest. I mean, I mm-hmm. think people are at their strongest when they're doing things that they love doing things that uh make give them fulfillment doing things that bring them closer to other people um that would that's what makes them strongest um actually but that doesn't always mean you have to put all your all all of your points into military and and defense and um and war i mean what if a culture is extremely uh, intellectually advanced but they um uh, but they don't have like the best military, and then there's another country that just has fucking like orcs, and they're just a war machine, and that's all they do. They get all of their money from war, they get everything from war, but they have a extreme, they have extreme poverty, they have like the depravity, as you would say, they have all of these horrible things. Um, but they're really good at just throwing a bu- like hundreds and hundreds of like warriors at another society until they crumble. I wouldn't say that's a really fulfilling or or moral or just society in any way, shape, or form. This seems, like, really ridiculous. I mean, I think there's a, a element of truth to that as a matter of, like, I don't think we should be sending certain people. Like, I think you said, did you say you were born on, like, a militaristic base in, some, in one of your videos or something? I think you said I, something I'm, a mil- I'm a military kid. Both of my uh, parents spent 30 years in the military, and I okay. lived on Fort Knox. All right, so I, I don't think we should be sending, like, random people in the military to, like, all these areas that we are right now honestly like most of this is useless very true we shouldn't be involved in a lot of this stuff my question would more so be that i I guess we can move on from this because probably the intricacies of these other countries and their um and how they define certain things would not be very substantial no but i would like to ask like why you why you believe that um 
like a society's worth is is defined by like how easy it is for them to kill other people I don't think it is. If you're trying to push on, like, am I a Nazi or something, I can understand I'm not, that. I'm not trying to push on is. whether or not you're a Nazi. You, you were, you were like, you, you, po- you poised the question to me, like, oh, you said these societies were good. Well, they were killed. So that means that they, it just intrinsically, they had to have been worse because they were killed. So I, w- I would like to ask, like, why is the, uh, the place that killed them better because they killed them? Maybe I misspoke. I missed that. Because I was thinking more so on like the along the lines of like Native Americans that were beaten because they weren't sending a lot of their strongest troops because they weren't as intact with what it meant to be a man, and that would that was the point I was trying to get at. I guess that I was. What do you mean thinking of it? Not what does it mean to be a man? I mean, I think it's a question you probably ask a lot, but um, it means to put yourself in the way for the protection of those most important and vital, the, those that are um, most prone to danger being like your wife or your kids. And a man means that you value yourself, but you understand at the end of the day that your sacrifice is to something greater. It's the, um, the calling for something greater to, of sacrificing, I guess. It's to put yourself to something. That would be what it means to be a man. So to be a man is to sacrifice your life for other people? I mean, if we look at, I mean, that, that's a, definitely a bastion of manhood. It's not the only, it's not, it's, you don't have to sacrifice yourself, but it's more so that if you're, you, if you are put in that situation, you would. That's what like manhood is, is the, the more the philosophical understanding of your importance to society and how that and how you are um you are the most physically and mentally strong person for combat or for certain things certain things such as fighting so i don't don't know about i don't know about like um mentally stronger um i mean men are physically stronger than women specifically by i i um they're very emotional i think any i think any cis woman who dates men um, will tell you that men can be extremely emotional um, creatures. Um, that's where we're humans. That's how we're built. Um, no, I don't. For me personally, I don't um, put put the, the the duty of men as in um, like what what it means to be a man as in like how willing you are to um, to die for someone else. Um, really. Okay. Um. I guess what would be, what would be, what would you describe as manhood or womanhood or dishood? Um, what would, what wait, would, what would these say? things you, or cishood? What would these things mean to you? Wait, do you know what cis means? Yes. Okay. Like just like not being trans, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, what 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 I would say is what what manhood is it's very um very difficult topic. Um, it has um. A lot of things tied into it. Um, uh, it's it's hard for me to put into a specific definition um, that um, that would be like um, just just for me personally. I think um, a manhood is something is something you you find in yourself and the fulfilling nature uh, of which um, uh, of which you come to as being a man and what makes you uh, most fulfilled in that um, um, in that. Uh, in that sense and for a lot of guys it seems to be really uh, similar very similar things which are often used like a lot of guys like to like to be big like to be strong like to be um physically domineering and like to um be the sort of defending type i'm personally um very um what is it i'm personally very protective um over my friends over my family over over the things that I love and the things that I care about. I'm personally that I'm personally that person. You know, when I'm walking with one of my um, women friends and some like random dude um, tries to do some like weird ass shit, I put myself between me and her. That's what I that's what I like to do. Um, but I don't think every guy should be that way. Um, I think um, a really good sort of dichotomy was um, I hate Harry Potter, but a person made a really good video about. <laughs> Um, what manhood was to um, one person in the Harry Potter universe. Hey, for any of you Harry Potter nerds, um, if you, what's this guy's name? He was um, the guy who took care of all of the magical beasts. 
you remember specifically? Like that guy, he was not like Harry Potter. He was not like he was not like the um uh the he was not like the highlight of Hagrid, is that right? Yeah, maybe. Um he was not like the the main he's not a main story person. He wasn't like physically really strong he was like a little bit socially awkward but he was extremely caring um not something that i would think that you would um apply to manhood he was extremely caring over the things that he loved he was extremely protective over the things that he cared about and and because of that through his like love and his care um and and um uh, and, and defending things that he loved in that way um, and not always it was like physically um, sometimes it was like intellectually or, um, or 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 in other ways he was able to find his manhood there and be and be a man that I think um, any guy could be envious of mm -hmm. I, I think protecting those the things that you care about is probably my, the definition of masculinity that I view to be closest to nature because I don't personally I guess we can get into why I don't think a woman can do, do what a man can and either protecting for loved ones and the bastion of putting yourself forth. Women tend to naturally be too emotional during these certain times. Now women are actually very good. Like if you look at like data on IQ, it tends to be like men are like high, low women have higher emotional intelligence. Men tend to have a very slight average, um, a very slightly better intelligence as the average but the women's um, emotional intelligence is better because women um, often channel their emotions into reasoning, and that doesn't come to play as much during times of severity because you don't want to be emotional during times of severity much would be, I guess, my Where did you get this idea that, that, um, that women are too emotional for, for defense? Um, I mean, there's multiple things for that. One would be the emotional intelligence, emotional IQ. I forgot what the the, ac the acronym is for it. Um, another thing would just be. But don't um, women viewing. have higher emotional IQ? Yeah. Okay. And then another thing would be um, how just generally how I um, how I observe women conducting their politics or different things. Okay, so what um, so so what you're saying? You think women are too emotional for uh, the same sort of capacity for defense, not in like a, a physical sense, because we all know that men typically, on average, are stronger than physically stronger than women. Um, but in like today's society, we typically don't need to use our physical strength to um defend someone. We all have like guns and knives, and uh, women have lots of uh, have like pepper spray and like tasers and stuff. So it's not really um, which can uh, really uh. Bite. I mean, you know, no matter how buff you are, you'll never be like Dark Shine. You know, the bullets won't bounce off; um, they'll go right through you. Um, so, like you've 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 determined this by what you've observed. But from what I've read and from what I've personally observed, I don't think this is very true at all. I think one of the some of the strongest people in um in America are um are people are single parents, and in America, single parents tend to be um, single mothers. Those people to be able to carry a job and kids and raise them, even though sometimes the outcomes aren't um aren't uh, aren't like great. Um, like being able to even get through that is something incredibly difficult that takes a lot of things to juggle and a lot of emotions you go through to be able to to to, to be able to even like do that. i can't even imagine trying to raise an entire kid for like 18 20 years so it's all by myself that like that, that sounds like an inc incredibly emotional thing that on top of women having higher emotional intelligence making making them more uh, understanding of their emotions like if a guy i mean lots of guys they're not told how to they're not taught conditioned how to understand their emotions if some dude um, has a lot of problems. Usually, guys don't deal with their problems head on. I'm not sure if you agree with that, but this tends to be true from from what psychologists have um, uh, ha have understood. Men don't typically deal with like, especially loss and grief head on. They just don't. What they do is they get active. They usually start doing things and they bottle up. And that bottle up tends to um, uh, be uh, tends to uh, come out in like massive outbursts. Sometimes this could this could actually um, uh, un uh, show how men have. Um, can be sometimes loose cannons um, and um, can lose themselves to their emotions. That's that's an, uh, committing violence. That's that can be an extremely emotional outburst that you have. Um, something that women just typically tend not to do, um, just on 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 the same level as men do, and, and to not the same <laughs> severity. I just really think that 
women ha- oh and also like on top of that like um women being able to get through their problems being able to do that it seems like they just are capable of doing this a lot of the times they're just not given the opportunity to or like guys do it um guys do like the physical defense for them okay so i pref the the first argument i would be i would have about the thing that you said would be the idea that like men are loose cannons that um when they aren't taught emotions and then they have like some emotional loss they then channel it in a way that is um not a correct way to deal with emotions and my my question would be why do you think that is do you think it's like well it's a quick question do you think that's due to society or do you think that's due to nature I think that's due to society. There are lots of men, especially today, who grow up in in um, households and societies and like cultures, um, like small bubble cultures. Neighborhoods can even be like small cultures that are um, that that are taught to um, that are taught about their emotions. That it's okay to have emotions, and they tend to have better outcomes. Um, especially today, where women are where women specifically um, don't search for the same sort of like traditional man as as women did prior. They look for more men who are. Um, Emotionally, for one, emotionally available, emotionally um, uh, understand their emotions and um, and can handle and deal with them. I think I don't think it has very much to do with um, nature. I think it has a lot to do with conditioning. Okay, so one of my questions would be: You spoke as to the idea that um, women are very strong because they can like both work and care in like an issue where they're single single mothers. And I agree; like that's a very noble thing to do is to still care whenever your father leaves. My question would be, why would they not still have that same outcome when the father leaves? Do you believe that's because it's two parents or the loss of a father role? Well, seeing as that, um, seeing as uh, gay households have the same outcomes as straight households, it doesn't seem to be the man specifically. It seems to be two parents. Um, that that um, is the greatest cause of um, struggle for, uh, for single family households. Yeah, double income. Double income, two people there. At, my bad. At least two people there. More people caring. Grandparents, family members, um, friends, uh, family, lo- like, loved ones. Those people. If everyone is involved, like, you know, how people are, return to tradition, monkey mode, you know, it takes a village to raise um, a kid. Um, if there's more people involved in a kid's life and financial well-being, then they just turn out better. All right, so that question, which, like, analysis you're using that, for that because i've looked at a lot of the um data that um looks at homosexuality um homosexual parents or parents not of man woman not of the traditional um western n- um n- nuclear family sorry um that same outcomes occur and a lot of it is bad data um com- comprised of bad methodology so you can send me some studies if you like did any of your studies were any of your studies conducted by a man named Regnerus? Yes, that was okay. one of them, but I stand the issues with that one. Yeah, that study's been debunked several times, um, and his reanalysis uh, twice. Well, for one, it wasn't even like, like it, it was. It was his study was like sanctioned, and it was. Um, uh, for peer review, it failed peer, peer review, and reanalysis of the study twice in 2015 showed that um, there was no difference between men and women. My bad, uh, het and um, um, uh, 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 gay households when it comes to the outcomes of their of their kids. I'm not sure what data that you're looking at. It, it just seems to be a pretty opening open and shut case that um, gay households have similar and sometimes greater outcomes for their children than straight households. Okay. Um. I guess if, that, if that's your if that's your view, I have seen a lot of the critique of that study, so that wasn't the one I'd use. I'll have to go get that with you. I don't have this on hand right now. Um, my question would be, why would you accept... Why do you accept... I guess we went on this earlier, but why do you accept, like, um, scientific consensus as what defines, like, nature or what defines youth or how we should conduct that? These are people who spend their entire lives researching this. They went to school for it. They research it. They spend all their time doing it. There's a reason why we can trust them to some degree. Now, we can't trust all of them. Um, so that's why we have systems like peer review. And sometimes a lot of them can be wrong as well. And that's why research changes. And a lot of people say that um, uh, like really big studies are usually the ones that get um, published. Well, while this is true, 
And so this could lead to um, research going in one direction. If all the research goes in one direction and you have a really big study that shows things going in the complete opposite direction, that also show that's also a study that's more likely to be published than one that isn't. So um, at the end of the day, um, for, are you a capitalist? Uh, populist. Are you, well, do you believe in, do you, are you a, like an anti-capitalist? You don't believe in capitalism? Uh, I believe in capitalism in a way that's conducted to be pro like the American per the American per person first. Are so you nothing to so like. Uh no. Okay, so you you don't believe in markets at all. I know that they exist, but I don't think they shouldn't be intervened. Well, do well do you well let's say well regulated market. Do you do you or do you believe in that? Yeah, sure. Sure. Okay. So as someone who believes in at least a well-regulated market, I would, I would imagine that the idea that, um, that, uh, that in, in the market of, um, scientific research seems to be pretty well working of you have, um, it now there are lots of problems, but, um, if there's a massive, if there's a massive like scientific consensus and there's a big study that goes the opposite direction, there are people who go and critique it just like the study with Regnerist. There was a big study, went the opposite direction than the consensus, and it was critiqued, and it failed several times. And I don't, I don't have any reason to believe, looking at the methodology and also looking at independent sources as well. I mean, if you can find anybody else who's independent who can critique some of those, I'd, I'd like to see. But um, it, it doesn't seem like there's any real reason to um, not believe them. So the um. I guess the idea of a scientific consensus, cons consensus, my problem with that would be, I guess I believe in this idea that you spoke to earlier, not existing of this global homo um, enforcement. What would be your argument against that about the idea that government enforced homosexuality, that government is enforcing the liberalization of one from at least what I perceive as human nature being that of the role of man and woman? Um, uh, the government isn't forcing anyone to be gay. The government's just forcing people to not discriminate against people, which I think is perfectly fine, um, at least for our constitution. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, uh, promote the general welfare. It's like right there in the constitution, one of the first things. I think that's the government's role. Um, provide for the you know common defense and uh, all of that. Um, I, I think it, it, that's like perfectly fine. I don't think there's any real globo homo at, at besides don't don't discriminate against gay people. Doesn't seem like that there's any like research to back that up any or like any well, like perceive. Do you have anything perceivable that makes you believe in the globo homo? Um, my question would be the normalization of not discriminating against a certain group would be the idea of normalizing it to a level that they. I mean, I guess there's some there's some areas I'd agree to that. Like, obviously, I don't think you should go do, do what they do in a lot of the Middle Eastern countries or South African countries. Um, but the normalization would be the idea of like liberating from societal constraints. So that'd be how they're forcing it. Because when you normalize something, it inevitably grows in power. When you like normalize something, it inevitably grows in size. You don't like create something and then have it not grow as seen by like the 17 percent of gen x or is it gen, sorry gen z um saying that they are identifying the lgbt plus community my question would be like what do you think is causing that increase i guess i mean it doesn't seem like they're being brainwashed by tv to like uh, kiss for girls to kiss boys uh, girls to kiss girls or anything it seems like it seems like the normalization just lets people for one, experiment, and two, um, and two, identify as what they would have anyways if if left to their own devices, which seems uh, fine because it seems like human um like society performs better when humans can act, uh, can find actualization in their own personal identities. It just seems fine. So I don't I don't think there's anything out there to show that um, like Gen Z. Like Zoomers are are being gay because um like TV told them or anything. It seems like they hey maybe want to try it out, um see what works. Usually they try things out for like a couple maybe a, a day, a couple weeks, a month, a year, two years, and then they just go back to being cishet. And also okay, like so LGBTQ has a lot of different 
things in it. You could just be, you could just, you can identify as LGBTQ when you're not when you're ninety percent straight, and you're like, yeah, I'm like, bye, I guess. I could have a sex with a dude right now, and that, and then boom, you're LGBTQ there, which is seems pretty innocuous. Well, I think it's all gay, so maybe okay. I disagree on that because I think gayism is the idea of sexual liberal sexual liberalization, the idea of not being conformed to promiscuity i mean the the idea of not being um sorry not the idea of being promiscuous and not conforming to the idea of a nuclear family would be how i define the word gay nothing nothing there was about being promiscuous nor about not being in a nuclear family unless you only describe a nuclear family as like man and woman which i don't think anyone ever uses that term in that way that's usually how it's used in nuclear family. That is quite not often. true. Nuclear family is used to describe like your immediate family. Yes. That that you could just be adopted. Usually they're called adopted family. Not nuclear. The that nuclear family is usually referred to your mom your and dad. Nuclear family can be your adopted family. Because I disagree on that fact. I don't think that any parents can replace the man and woman or the mother and father and my question i mean you like, can just, you, that can be your feeling and i mean if those are your feelings i mean okay but i just don't i mean i i don't think we should just run a society purely off of just what some people feel isn't that what isn't that what promoting homosexuality is is running society based off of how people feel well homosexuality is not a way to run society um for for one um a way to run society would be oh yeah also for one the being uh, for one like you can be gay and be in a nuclear family and two nothing about being gay means you're promiscuous there are many um monogamous um uh gay people and queer people out there who just want who want a single partner and then to marry them like many people who are also queer want that they don't not uh, these gay people don't run in like Run like far fucking lower community rate, spiders, uh, like community spiders or something. At far lower rate, though. Far lower rate than like straight people. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're. Wait, what? It. Wait, here. Let me see. One second. Shark. And also, are you talking about just not being married, or like being in a single relationship, or like what are you talking about? I guess. What do you question? What are you confused on, or? questioning me on i guess I'm, I'm confused as to which part you are questioning me on at this moment okay so like you because you said they're like i want to make sure are you saying like are they you're saying they're far less monogamous meaning they're more promiscuous or are they less or are they just less monogamous and not more and not like crazy promiscuous um is what i'm asking what are you saying because you're I saying think they're monogamous both- and promiscuous is like two different sides of the of the same coin well, I think they're both the inevitability of sexual liberal sexual liberalization. They're not exactly the same thing, no. But I think if you if you are, you know, going around with multiple people, that's a promiscuous lifestyle. But what do the you mean by like not- multiple people? What if you like? What if over ten years you have ten partners, and those ten partners you have they're your only sexual partner for one year? If you're, well, my opinion would be if you're going more than one sexual partner, then that's st- that's still promiscuous. Because I believe in sex being um, confined to marriage. Okay. I mean, that doesn't um, seem like the, the definition of monogamous and promiscuous, but uh, I mean, if that's just like how you feel, okay. Okay. Um, how, would, how would you define it, I guess? Well, monogamy seems to be like you, in, you engage in like, well, for one, you're married to one person at a time, or, you mm-hmm. have, or you're having a sexual relationship with one person at a time. Um, yes. That seems like to be the the definition of monogamous, but like monog- at the end, the at a time is is what separates a monogamous person from a um, uh, from a promiscuous person. There's someone who could spend years with one person and then drop them and then like break up and then spend years with another person, um, and during that time, that person is not promiscuous. That person is monogamous, even if they have multiple partners. They're monogamous. They're monogamous in that partnership. Yeah, but well, I, I agree with that. What I was saying is that um, gay people are much likely to be polyamorous or different things of the such, not confined to, 
I guess I was saying that like poly, is polyamory word? Okay, whatever. Polyamorous, <laughs> polyamorous relationships are much more um, uh. I can't think of the word. Whatever. I would like to say though, you can volatile. Like, what are you trying to say? Um, they're much less likely to. I mean, um, polyamorous is much more promiscuous. It is the idea of like being with multiple people. The idea that like sex is not confined to a, a relationship such as marriage. It's the idea that like you, the idea of openness, the idea of liberation, liberation of freedom. I guess the ultimate freedom. Well, it depends on what you mean by relationship. Two people could not be dating, but are in a sort of like emotional relationship where it's not like technically official. It could be, but I don't think there's too much of a difference between like mm-hmm. you, you stating you are in a relationship and you just uh, and and you not. I mean, at the end of the day, like a marriage is literally just a, a statement for for a Christian person. A marriage has nothing to do with the government, for one. So um, it, it's just it's literally all just a statement. I don't think there's like too too much of a difference um, uh, there w- when not regard to marriage specifically, but like dating and not dating. You could easily just be monogamous in that in that relationship there. I don't think just because you you've had sex with like multiple people over the course of like five years, but over but there's massive breaks in between, and you're monogamous when you're in the when a like air quote relationship because not a really relationship has to be like a. A dating one like you're you are like boyfriend girlfriend or whatever okay so i guess maybe we're missing each other what would you like what do you define as love because that's like kind of idea is that if it's love then it's fine i'm not against love but what what are you defining as love i, I don't i mean i'd love to i mean like the like the, the emotion emotional connection that you have with a person to the extent that you th- would call it love Okay, so that would be my question is, uh, I guess, or my issue would be because I'm looking at it from a worldview that of um, believing that love is um, wanting to bear children because I believe that to be literally the. You don't love your grandma? That's a common argument. There's a difference between a romantic love and a, and a love between friends. Like, I wouldn't. Sure. I like, also I'd agree love with that. my wife, but that doesn't mean I'd go and look at my grandpa. Or like want my grand want to see my grandpa nude like I love him but like there's the, there's a clear difference between the love of like for your, like your grandpa your grandma and that of someone that you are romant- romantically li- with. If you like have if you like have sex with someone without their consent is that love? No. But you want to have kids with them. Love is a. It has to be reciprocated. Thing that both people agree to. Well, no, it's not. That- both people agree to so wait so something. you're saying so are you saying that love, love has to be reciprocated for it to be love love has to be between two cons- a consenting man and woman okay, in a married so, relationship oh so it has so it has to be married so you can't love someone outside of a marriage the want to get married i guess you don't, don't have to be to married, married. But, sure yes. but can all of that be on one side and then you just do something to someone is that love No, it's not. So love has to be reciprocated by the other person you're in a, you want to be in a partnership with for you to call it love. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to, I wanted to get that down if this, um, okay. So it has to be reciprocated for you. Cool. Um, th- uh, this feels like it's, um, running away from like the initial point on like trans people. Mm-hmm. So we have, we didn't even like dig down on that yet. Yeah. Okay. So trans people are people they're doing their thing they don't identify with the gender that they uh were, were assigned at birth and they're vibing what's your problem my problem is that i want people to be see i care for people i'm sure you do too i'm not saying you don't that, that kind of came off like i was i want to make that clear um well, i'm i'm approaching it from the idea of wanting to care for people that i want people to be living what makes them happiest i guess it'd come down to me defining happy i don't think you're happy when you're separated from nature there's a lot of data on that I mean, I don't have the citizen in front of me right now. I can get, get some, but there is different things like the mental health of transgender, transgenderism and the mental health of liberalism because the idea that you're separated from your nature and you can alleviate, you can separate yourself from your intricacies as a person. 
you, you can separate yourself from your intricacies of nature and become the ultimate individual, someone that's liberalized from nature and from societal um, constraints. So my, my thing would be, I don't want, I don't want my kids growing up gay or the, or other people uh, or my kids being trans. And the thing is that if it's normalized in society, then I then it's going to inevitably have an effect on them because once the societal standards are gone to allow the ultimate individual, then it's eventually going to be pushed on them. Okay. So I, I just, I, I don't, I don't understand getting away from like getting away from your nature. Why do you think people transition? I think there's a lot of things. I mean, there is, there is, um, some, and when I say transition, I don't mean like surgical transition. I mean, state that you are, that you identify as a gender different than when you were born as. They can easily be a non-binary person who still goes by like he, him, or she, her. Emotional damage or poor family structure. So okay, so you think that they have to be abused to want to transition? Not necessarily. Well, I mean, I guess neglect would be more. So they have to be neglected not, not like, or abused. It doesn't have to be, to be physical. Yeah, sure, they have yeah. to be neglected or abused. It can be to emotional. Want to yeah. Um, yeah, it can be emotional. Yeah. There is a level of biology. Did you look at any research on that? Or are you just, yeah, if you look at twin studies, it's around, it's not completely there, which there is, I was going to, I was about to say, there is some biological stuff to it. Like it's around, like, I think, I don't remember, I think the twin study on like transition was somewhere around like the 15, I don't remember around which region it was where both would be trans in different family, but that would, it it not being a hundred would mean that there is at least some level of environment to it. I do think that certain hormones um, have been more likely to make people want to transition, but that doesn't, um, in, I don't think that enforces it unless there's a society that's accepting it because people aren't going to like come out or normalize something in their brain when it's not societally accepted. Um, okay. It just seems like LGBT kids, it seems like queer kids just get more abused and ag- neglected when they, um, when they display um when they display traits that um their parents don't like that that would be like um that 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 would be like um uh deviant to what their parents would want so it seems like a guy like a like a boy would be more neglected by his parents if he like put on nail polish once or wants to wear skirts um which would seems which, which would seem to be just about right and would also make more sense with more people with with more people being accepting of queer people um and not abusing them as much there's more of them in gen z than there was in millennials and there was in gen x and silent silent generation and whatever i mean if you want to look at like the environmental impact i think it's definitely true because if we look at like the rates that are going up it's of people identifying as lgbt it is that of i guess we're, if we, even if we're sticking just with trans it is of the youth it is of like the people now that once they're coming in that failed structure where we don't have that nuclear family that we don't have, I guess, I wouldn't say nuclear family, or just a mother and father, I guess, that transgenderism has become more normalized. And I, and I am seeing not having man and woman as emotional abuse, which is where I am um, arriving at the conclusion that emotional abuse is causing transgender, transgender. So, you not, so you think not having a, a, a mom and a dad is emotional abuse? Yes. Okay, then. I mean... I mean, if you feel that way, okay. There's um, plenty of analysis on it. If you want to look at that, like, of, um, I mean, like, what is the is the analysis on two parents versus one parent? Um, there's those. I guess those of um, ma- male and female. Other than that one study that you reference, which I know is um, deeply flawed, there is ones. There is the other ones. I can I can actually find them for you if you want. Because I guess we went back in a loop there, but um, yes, there is studies that, that would affirm that male and females together don't um, create the same conclusions of a child that male and male or female and female does. So what outcomes are they looking at? Do you know? You can like uh, just uh, something you looked at, or does it just say the outcomes are better? Well, no. Um, it tends it tends to either it, it, a lot of times it's either like quality how they rate quality of life or it could be suicide attempts or it could be i guess there was that one about school which i guess might be one that you referenced but um 
yeah, there's a lot of different ways to, um, I guess a, a lot of the data comes down to how the researcher defines like better quality of life. So well, I guess I think, um, typically like queer people tend to have, um, uh, just on average, like lesser qualities of life because they tend to be um, discriminated more against in society. So if the kid is in a, is in a household where uh, they're they're able to be queer, I think, um, and they're raised up that way, they could be happier. But in some ways, they could rate their quality of life a little bit worse because I don't know, maybe they could be bullied at school by people who think it's like weird that they have two moms or something. That's actually something that's been uh, shown that like um, people in uh, gay people, their kids tend to be more bullied um, in school, which leads to them having like less friends, which could rate their quality of life technically worse. But I wouldn't say now let's stop the kid from being queer. I'd say let's fix society. Okay, I think that's a that's a fair that's a fair um conclusion to it, but I think it's arriving based off of false conclusions because I don't. I had a point. I promise. <laughs> it's okay. I, I have ADHD. It happens to me too. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I guess okay. I remember now. It was the Williams Institute research on transgenderism, that of which even those that reach their quality of life to be better those that feel that they that transition has made their quality of life better have still reported having a 39 percent attempted suicide rate so my question would be like what would you think about that study or from people who like, came from queer households is that right no from I was talk, i'm talking about transition like because you were talking about um feeling quality of life and i'll say that even those because this is this applied specifically to transitioning the people that feel that their quality of life is bettered by transition that feel that they have had that they're like happier that they're being treated better they have a better quality of life suicide temp rates 39 percent um okay i so mean that's still, wait that's still a problem are you are you trying to in, are you trying to infer that that comes from like just some like core problem to being trans like core problem for yes. being trans okay I, that just doesn't seem to be true because um because when it comes to trans uh kids uh, family acceptance is about 90 percent of um uh, of what causes like suicide rates and it seems to be when um Research, is, research, is, research has shown that trans kids' suicide rate um, completely falls to within within the um, uh, reasonable expectation of like cis kids um, when their family accepts them when they uh, uh, w when they come out as trans. So it doesn't seem like there's any like core fundamental problem besides like how how they're treated in society. Okay, so my. All right. So you're you're prefacing that um, the d data is showing that people, when they're more accepted by family or their societal peers, which I definitely think it's true, if you are being discouraged in a certain way by your family, which I think some things parents are definitely discouraged. I don't think that's something we're disagreeing. But um, when you feel like what? I'm saying, I'm saying there's some things that parents should that we agree on, like. Some things parents Ranking. shouldn't discourage. Yeah. Um. Okay. Sure. Like I was just saying, I was just prefacing that there were some things that we both agree on. So just like alcoholism or different different destructive behaviors towards children. Sure. Um. I guess my, I am saying that I think that going th going through with such um idea that you are alleviated from your nature. Um. If you look at I don't believe that they're alleviated from their nature. I think being like understanding that you are trans in some way, like non-binary, that you are like gay or like whatever. I think that brings you closer. I think that brings you closer to your nature because you're not faking it anything anymore. Okay, so you believe that the are you saying that the identity that how they how they identify is defining their nature, or are you saying that they were trans already, but they were like in the wrong body, they which were is like, a common. Well, I'm not. I wouldn't say that it's like wrong body, but um, they are. Um, we usually don't describe it as like wrong body, but sure, whatever. Um, wait. Also, wait. How old are you? Seventeen. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, so I wouldn't. So for me, it seems like that's that's like something that's in their nature. Like people don't like grow being trans somewhere in their brain. They're like born that way, um, typically. 
Um, so that is their that is their nature. You're not escaping nature. You trying to change that is actually escaping from their nature and has shown to increase suicide rates. So you can say even let's even even let's say like we'll we'll live in like pretend world for a moment that um no matter no matter what um. Uh, like a like a qu- queer people have a, like a higher suicide rate. The queer people who then are forced to suppress being queer have an even higher suicide rate. So if that was the case, then it still would be beneficial in every way. It seems it would be closer to their nature, unless you think it's within people's nature to just want to commit suicide, um, just just for the memes or something. Um, I think it brings them closer to their nature of who they are as a human being. <laughs> sorry my friend messaged me something funny sorry about that um i think i think i definitely agree i think that if you're like if you're identi- i think the problem comes that identity is being affirmed by society if your identity if you believe something to be true and you believe that your parents are against you in that then you're going to be very um you're you're, you're not going to trust your parents and that's not a good like emotional that doesn't have a good emotional tell on tell on you to um, feel separate, separated from your parents. I sure, think that but you could also you want it. society to be reaffirming your gender. Would you like to go outside every single I, day I and people saying, refer to you I, as like she? I don't think the problem it comes from parents not affirming it. I think the problem comes from society saying that the issue that the the that the identity is true. I I think that makes it even better. Like I said, do you want to walk out into the world and everyone refers to you as she and her all the time? Would that make you feel happy? I'm, I'm a dude, so no. Okay. So yeah, you, we want people to be reaffirming people's gender. Right. I guess I don't. I don't think we're disagreeing on that. I think we're disagreeing on whether that person's truly a man or woman. Because I don't believe. Like I, I, I think we're both. You're saying that people should be. We're both saying people should be affirming someone's gender. I'm saying that someone's gender is what they were born as and you're saying someone's gender is um i guess you're also saying what they were born as but it's how they so are you saying people are born trans is that is that your position yeah it seems to be true okay so i guess we're we're kind of saying the same thing but i'm saying that i'm saying that in such a in a view that there's only man or woman you're saying that in a view that there is a differentiation i mean that there is more sorry that there's more than the two more than the binary yeah, I know it just it just seems like um there has never been a time in society where people want to force people's like, um minds to match their body typically. Um it it just seems like once again like people are just born this way. It seems like perfectly reasonable to go, "Oh, if people are born this way, then we should be reaffirming it. We shouldn't try to force people's minds to match their bodies. We should be forcing their bodies to match their minds." Because who they are is not their body. Who they are is all up in all up in the squishy meatball uh, between their ears. My question would be: Why would we want the body to match the mind when the mind is so neuroplastic, neuroplastic, like so ever changing? To where well, some things can change, some things don't. I mean, you don't wake up. You don't. I'm guessing you don't wake up some days and think that you're a woman, do you? No, because of neuroplasticity, it's it's a long process. Okay, um, sure. Like when, once again, like it does. It, some things change, some things don't in people, and I don't really think um, it's society's real role to try and force someone to a box when it doesn't seem to be any any useful at all ever. Okay, um, well, so I was so well trying to get from the conversation so was what, like, what, wait, my my question would be like, what do you what do you want? What do, what do you so trans people exist? Okay, so what do you want us to do? Um. What they did in the fifties. What is what is that? Conversion therapy. Con- so conversion. You're saying conversion therapy works in some way. Yes. How? I think the st- the studies um are looking at conversion therapy in a time when all the other outside influences are telling them that that their identity is true, but in a time when the whole societal influence would be telling them that their soci- that their identity isn't true, it would actually help them because their their brain is so neuroplastic plastic that it could um realign itself with the with what they were born as and realign themselves with either being a man or a woman and because that's that's how neuroplasticity of the gray matter in your brain works it could realign yourself with that but 
I think a so lot of the time when you think you could be like, taught to be a woman? No. Because. Really? N- no. Okay, why? Which is why it's never, which is why the data shows that like, the data shows that like your brain is much closer to like being a woman, but it never shows that your brain is that of like an actual woman if you're like a man and then treat as a woman your whole life. It's never like that of an actual woman, but it's like much closer to that because of neuroplasticity, your brain is like, your brain is framing itself to be that thing that you're wanting to be, but it's never actually fully getting there because of the basic biological structure that your brain was created with of being a man or a woman, which would be why they feel discomfort because they feel that their identity is true as either like whatever, but their brain cannot physically get there because their brain is designed to be a man or woman. Their brain is what, so where do you have any, wait, do you have any research on that specifically? Their brain is designed to be a man or woman. So it's easy to, um, to make, have them transition. Are you, are you inferring that? There's plenty of, uh, there's plenty of data on the difference between male and female brains and, um, their structure. Are there, what's, what's the research on trans women and women's brains? There was that one that, um, said that trans women, men that are identifying as women are, I don't remember who it came from, but men that are identifying as women are, their brains are closer to that of women than men, but it isn't exactly that of women. And it, the same thing goes along the lines of like gay men. So it's not, it's not in the same, like, it's not in the same, like, uh, it, it's in, are you saying like it's outside of a certain circle that we would imagine, like, um, uh, the typically cis women's brains fall into? Um, I mean, sure, but if their brain is built like that, you're telling me you can change. So if their brain is built like that, leading to them, leading to them, um, uh, being trans, then you're saying like fundamentally you're going to have to change those structures of that brain. Yeah, which is why the studies would show that it's never actually fully that of a woman. The neuroplasticity is framing itself as that of a woman, but it never becomes fully that thing because it's not designed to. It's unreachable. The goal of obtaining woman status leveled up. You have your woman status now. Rank up. Let's go. Um, Getting, achieving that is never possible because of the because of the structure that it was, it came with, you can get close to it, but you can never fully get there. So by normalizing, like what is the, the, let's say something like gender ident- identity disorder or gender dysphoria, whichever, um, the idea that like you're, you, you feel just dis- disconnect with what you are at least described to be born as, um, you feel disconnect with that and you feel to be whatever, but your body is not fully being that you don't feel that you're fully there yet. Um, this idea, this, um, this is created by the fact that your brain can never fully be that of whatever it was not born at. It can only be close to it and you'll forever be longing for that thing and forever be unhappy because you're trying to reach an unobtainable goal. Where is your, where's your research to say that conversion therapy leads to better outcomes? And is it Um, from like the fifties? Well, the fifties would be the only time when um conversion therapy um when the identity isn't being normalized i'm i think conversion therapy now would would not work definitely not because conversion therapy when your identity is being normalized by other people but people that are closest to you are trying to convert to you would be more harmful because it would actually be you'd be affirming people would be affirming your identity but you feel separated from your like your parents and your peers so that that would be more harmful which would be would be why those studies actually show that um conversion therapy is more harmful because it's looking at it in current data because the current society is affirming it to be true when you're affirming it to be true and your peers are affirming not something not to be true it's going to be harmful but when we go back to something like the 50s where um it wasn't being affirmed to be true they were actually it was actually much better because they were being being affirmed to their nature like if it was like right now conversion therapy yeah I think suicide rate would be even higher right right now because not even you just are, higher. It's double. Um, what? Yeah, not even just higher. It's you double from your peers right now. But you're if you look at from like your peers, you're you're feeling disconnect from your peers, or you're feeling that your peers aren't caring for you because they're not because they're telling you because everyone around you this everyone around you the media, the social medias, and even the government is telling you that your identity is true. 
But if your parents aren't, your suicide is going to be higher. But if the everyone around you is telling you your, your identity isn't true, and your parents are also telling you it isn't true, I believe that that, um, that suicide rate would be lower. And we can look at that from studies from like the 50s when, when the um, groups around them weren't affirming that identity. I'm not disagreeing that like right now, like I'm not disagreeing right now if like something like sex reassignment therapy existed right now, it would not, it would not go well because right now um, the people that would be putting you through that, like your parents, they would be affirming something that you believe to be true because of everyone around you pushing it as true and they'd be saying it's not true. So when everyone's pushing something as true, except like your parents, you feel disconnected with your parents, which is very emotionally damaging. So I don't think, so I think like those studies right now would be showing like um, what, what such treatment would do during a time when um, gender identity is, ex is accepted by everyone else. But when we look at it from like the fifties, when it wasn't accepted, that a suicide rate would be much lower. Um, so what, so what are these studies and have they been debunked? I mean, every study has been quote unquote debunked by lab coats, but. I mean, okay. So, like you, so there's lab coats that you do trust that say things that you like, and then you distrust lab coats that say things that you don't like. That seems what everyone else is doing. I'm just being more honest about about it. Ooh, so here's a really interesting thing that um I hear a lot of conservatives like they they gesture at, um but but I guess it's um at least at least you are honest where they imagine everyone else is being dishonest they imagine everyone else is being super self-centered they imagine everyone else to being to be like cruel so instead of trying to be better they just do it themselves um and worse because they just imagine everyone else is um is that way typically I don't um I I, I, I don't like to live my life like that if it, if it's right I just like to do it um it, it I, I, I there's no research that I have shown you or no research that I have cited, and I could send you research, I guess, if you want, um, that I believed just because it said something that I liked. I believed it because it went through rigorous um, research. It went through rigorous um, retesting and retrialing by different people by with who? different motivations. Well, well, they're, they're peers, like other, other researchers, and not all researchers are paid by the same exact people with the same exact motivations. Um, it's all the Jews. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I was joking on that. I, I, sorry, I, I forgot. Your I appreciate name. it. I, I was, yeah, that um, was ironic. I wasn't being serious there. Yeah. Also, I was free on Twitch. Mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> sorry, you can go on. So it doesn't seem to be. Um, it it, it, it doesn't seem. I, I don't. I don't. I don't live my life like that. Um, it just seems really weird that you would just be like, look, other. I see other people lie, so why don't I lie too? It doesn't seem very intellectual. It doesn't seem very high energy. Uh, sorry, I was just laughing at the word high energy because I think it's funny. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I guess you're you're looking at conservatism as an idea of like projection. I guess on that that you think I think you're saying that I think that um, I think certain people are just picking which studies go with their um, go with their worldview, and you're saying that I'm saying that because that's what I'm doing deep down inside. I'm projecting that into other people. That's I'm not what, saying that I'm, I don't know about, I'm, I, I don't know specifically what's going on inside, inside you. All I know is that this seems like a, be a very strong conservative thread where conservatism, um, like fundamentally is, um, is, is rooted in like individualism and knowing your place hierarchy and, um, and um, uh, the, uh, the idea of uh, the cruel world philosophy, that the world is cruel and people are self-centered, so you need to be looking out for yourself and you can step on people and that's okay. And you, yeah, and, and you, and you told me there, you can, you can easily just pick and choose studies that you feel like um, that, that support your points because it just does and you've seen other people do it, so you can just do it too. I mean, that's the, you just seem to be like a, the, the, walk, the walking case study of what I, what I believed about conservatism. Epic title it. I got I got your video title for you. All right, you can title it Conser conservative confirms everything to be true that I believed or conservative admits. I'm trying to think of a good title. What's a good title for you? I don't know. You I may not even I may not even upload this, but I was. <laughs> But, but that that's okay. Um, but I mean, it just seems it just seems pretty sad that you just be like, yeah, other people lie, so I'm just gonna lie about all my research. I mean, I'm I'm not. I actually have 
the studies. I have I have the research, but when the propaganda apparatus is there to confirm a certain idea, it's very easy to just always appeal to it as a consensus when that when that has been an uh, institution that has been lobbied for by different gay activists in the, in the 90s and the thousands to create this propaganda apparatus that we have for the medical community. Sure. Um, I mean, or, if, if, if that was the case, I mean, I think it would be, it'd be really big. And they, there have been like psychological studies that have come out recently. I mean, what's one, one really big psychological study that came out that, I mean, I guess you could say like played into like the lefty narrative is the idea of, um, um, of willpower being limited there for 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 uh, i think like over a decade like researchers and psychologists imagine that um like willpower is is a limited sort of finite resource that you have and if you spend a lot of time um using willpower to not do one thing you'll have a less of an ability to do um another thing uh, to have willpower to not do another thing like later in the day and that was like widely accepted and then that was widely debunked um i don't know it just it just seems like instead of instead of being intellectual and being like hey i may be like wrong at this point it's like i am right on this point and everyone else is is just trying to make my kid gay so i have to just like cling on to some I just like, want to grill research. man just let me grill you yeah can, i you mean can grill all you want just it just seems like your ideas are bad for people i was more so being ironic i think there is i don't think you're wrong i think there is like some certain people that are like just let me grill i want to just do what i want you're trying to, it's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, you know. I think <laughs> there probably is a level of that. I'm not, <laughs> I don't think that's wrong. But there's also the people that are like source, which would be the liberals, which are, um, have been taught to look for the truth, not from that of a art, uh, study with good data, but just the idea of having data can, conf- conf- um, going along with what they're saying i I do Uh, think like having a shitty study is better than having no study like whatsoever someone who just walks around the world and just believes things because they are just goes fucking caveman mode and it is because it is um i think is like very stupid i think that person is is quite dangerous indeed um so having like at least having like something that's like bunk is i think personally better because at least like it's been put together by someone who seems like to have at least some i mean everyone has biases there's always going to be some bunk studies out there i think having at least something is better than having literally nothing but uh, at at the same time i think you, you should have the best quality research to back up what you what you say and do Shark. especially if you want to award view around it i ultimately ultimately agree i don't I, I was being ironic in some ways um some of it i wasn't as like the the, I guess my my thing would be I don't think I'm, it should I mean, be. I mean, I don't do push, push the lab coats meme, but then the, like pushes studies that agree with him. I mean, I why aren't those those are my lab coats? Those are the real lab coats. So true. Um, I mean, no, I mean, if, if a if a lab coat pushes something with good methodology, I'm willing to accept it. If yeah, if it has good methodology, because if a good methodology is finding something out, it's going to be the truth. The issue is that. The much more liberal side is just focusing on those that affirm what they believe to be true. I'm dishonest about it. And that's and that was that was a joke. Um, joke not landed. Uh, it's so, okay. Like I mean, I I don't pick up on jokes uh, on uh, it, in debates too um uh, too much. I'm, I'm busy. I'm busy thinking. Do you so are these so are these studies bunk and you just like use them because they agree with you? Gen- generally, no. Like the ones I the one I used earlier actually was uh well just tend to be the studies that agree with me with are the ones with the good methodology but um and specifically specifically on conversion therapy well no because there was there isn't really study on conversion therapy in a time when both gays exist and and like are like at such a prevalent amount to where good studies can be and when they're also being normalized because the truth is that homosexuals don't exist in a time when it's not being normalized Gay people don't exist in a time when it's not being normalized. Wait, like, what does that mean? Or that, like, or that the open... root cause of the root causes of it aren't being normalized. What do you wait? What do you mean root causes of being gay? That uh, that I went of earlier: emotional damage, um, not having proper figures to define, like not having proper parental figures that would define manhood, womanhood, and what it means to actually love someone in a romantic sense, not 
that afflict your grandmother. I know we went over that earlier. Um, I'm, like coming into um, politics um, and coming and coming to my own as um, as a political person, one thing that I've always like understood. Um, always felt like in my heart was that like conservatism is extremely emotional um, and I know a lot of like conservatives say the same thing about like the left and everything like um, like caring too much about empathy you're you're uh, you're uh, you're so open-minded that your brain falls out and all these sort of things but I feel like conservatism is like the peak sort of like emotional sort of like state of being where I don't know just where you're just like I, I just I all of my definitions of like having neglect is when you don't have the sort of um, family structure that I like. Not a family structure that's good. A family structure that I like um, is is emotional. Is it like emotional neglect or abuse or something? I just feel like that just is an extremely emotional argument that I don't know. Honestly, I'm kind of like curious how to argue against. It's just like besides just being like okay. Um, I think, I, like I, think it would, I think it wouldn't be possible to. I mean, I think that's fair. I think it wouldn't be possible to go into without discussing religion on your stream, which you said you tend to not to do. So we can shy away from that if you want to. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't debate my own religion. I mean, I, I understand like all of these points at the end of the day are just like the Bible. Uh, I, I interpret the Bible as saying so, so it is, which, but which is fine. But my thing is that if that's just like your political I ideology and you're just like, I identify, I identify with what I've been with, with what I've, uh, how I, how I interpret my Bible I don't know why you just start don't start there and end there when you understand that the research doesn't back you up with with what we've developed as people. Well, I think the research does back me up. I think a, a certain appeal to research alone often leads down a road to where we are supplanting the Bible in that moral truth. So that'd be why would be that I'm trying to plant the Bible in the moral truth and not research because I know that research can inevitably go wrong whenever it is accepted because humans don't think about things rationally and they don't look at methodology often they see a headline and they're like cool and that's about it sure but you can I think be the, you, but you're not the but the the people who who do that aren't the researchers aren't the peer researchers the peer researchers don't peer research a study by looking at its headline and abs and reading the yeah, abstract I, and being like epic um they they're, they're also the ones looking into the methodology and if you just don't have a study that backs it up i don't know why i don't know why sometimes you just, you just don't say i i interpret the bible as saying so so it is i mean sometimes i do i'm not generally the speaker of the right there's a lot of like there's a lot of liberals on the right that push for absolute individualism which is liberal idea, and would worship people like john locke so there's a lot of like liberals on the right unfortunately um but i guess that that comes more from like me not being the speaker of the right more so like the ism the idea of being like the ism yeah just the ism not the person not the group but the ism sure also someone in chat asked why can't science and christianity co coexist lots of researchers are personally religious um and that's why i keep every time i refer refer to the bible i it will um your name is carter right yes every time I, I refer to like you saying something about the bible i always preface it with your interpretation of because for one there are many interpretations of the bible that's why there are many uh, denominations um like just just for one um and i do think that i do think it can coexist this is why I'm, personally i'm a libertarian socialist Okay, so a lot of people on my side would be like, um, how does that exist? But I understand that. The idea of like libertarian socialists, the idea of like, I guess the individual, which is what liberalism is. I guess a lot of conservatives don't understand what liberalism is. Kind of cringe. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't, I don't really think that – I mean research in Christianity can exist. I think good research in Christianity exists. But the problem is that the absolute idea of arriving your moral truths from Christianity couldn't exist with – I mean, the idea of, sorry, the idea of arriving your moral truths from science couldn't coexist with Christianity because Christianity, you'd have to be taking your moral truths from the Bible. If you were a Christian, you wouldn't be taking it from research. I guess that, that'd be my answer to the question. Sure. Back to what we were talking about. Um, it doesn't seem like, like, I don't know, I, it, 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 like, it, it seems like conversion therapy doesn't help people. And it's still, if you have this research on conversion therapy, I'd, I'd like to see it. In, 
it doesn't end the time. Well, that's that's really research. Like, I, I understand what possible. you're saying. Like in the time frame where people are like, it's good to go to conversion therapy. You should be converted. Like then they have better outcomes. I just like to see the research. That research wouldn't exist because there wasn't gay people. Like there wasn't people openly gay or whatever. Oh, at the I time. thought I so thought that really exist. there were people who were openly gay. I mean, there are pe- wait, there are people who are openly gay, that, and they could have been researched. The, you wait, didn't you didn't you tell not, me you not had research? Si- not at the time of a sizable amount to get good research. Oh, so you have no good like, research on whether conversion therapy works, is what you're telling me. Sure. Okay, that, that that's actually what you believe. You don't have any good re- good research as to whether conver- conversion therapy works. Is that true? I have a lot of research on like things you'd push it doesn't work either, but yeah, sure. Um. Okay. And conversion therapy seems to increase people's suicide rates. So, like to my to my original question, which was, we have trans people that exist. Now what? It seems like the the option of conversion therapy seems bad. So now what? What what, what should we do? The question would people? be addressing the root cause of transgender transgenderism. So you want so you? I don't I don't, th- I don't think conversion per- therapy would work right now. As as I said earlier, asking about the studies, I don't think it'd work right now. But like, I think as of now, we have to accept. Like the people that that are doing what they can right now, because there's not much we can do about that. But addressing the root causes of it, to I guess to decrease the population by addressing the root cause, because eventually the population would go down as the other population is going up due to. You said you had research um, on um queer people um coming to be as as a result. Well, my bad. You you only you do you describe like neglect as just like having not not straight parents so i don't think there's any research on that specifically which i wouldn't which i don't and i don't think anybody else can like really considers as like, neglect or abuse so you say so you don't so in the terms of neglect as in not taking care of the the needs of a a, ki- a kid as in like being like as, as in the traditional sense of like helpful to them being there for them helping them with their homework if they let, let's say if they they say they're trans you you accept them as um uh my bad Let, let's say they um you say they're trans if they you accept them as that do you have any research to show that neglecting a kid like abusing them physically or like denying them when they say that they're like trans or gay or bi um that identity and also abusing them for it whether like physically verbally mentally do you have that to show or like a kid like let's say not let's say that they're not like they haven't expressed their by like you take a kid and you just abuse them you're saying that increases the likelihood of them being queer do you have any research on that physically abuse no uh, okay so physical abuse that's like marked out that does not increase your likelihood likely like a random kid's likelihood of being queer so you're saying like emotional abuse can increase the likelihood of a kid being queer but do, do you have any research on that? This is not just that is not just you have queer parents. It it come down to how the the research is defining um, emotional abuse. If it's that of like neglect, um, I believe there is some on that. I don't have it at hand, unfortunately. Unprepared, great. Um, but as far as yeah, it comes down to how the lab code defines um, emotional abuse. Which is why studies as such can produce different results, even with both having good methodologies, because often the definitions of words have a political leaning to it by the scientist, which is why certain studies can arrive at different political conclusions, despite both having good methodology. Sure. So, okay, so you you said you've seen research that um, emotionally abusing kids makes them more likely to be queer. Is this true? Uh, it define it depend on how we are defining motion, how the study or whatever is defining. Sure. So, are you saying that you disagree with some? So, are you are you disagreeing with some like definitions of emotional abuse? Like you're saying that some some researchers define emotional abuse as like I don't know, like your kid says that they're trans and you say no, you're not. I, th- I think anything. I think anything affirming um, someone's identity in the context that. They, I guess it would it would be abuse in the context that the whole society is pushing it because then you'd um, 
you'd be neglecting your child based off of like what everyone else is pushing on them. So I I'd, I'd actually agree like at at the time right now it might be abuse given um the tolls that it have on people given how it's pushed by other people around them but in a time when maybe it isn't pushed and then the parent is allowing such then that would be abuse so i think it ultimately depends on like how society's treating it then versus um what the parents are doing i guess so you don't think it's abuse to um to like deny a kid the uh, uh their want to be trans in a society that thinks that's okay oh that, that i think that is um i think it, i think it depends I, okay it depends on which transition measures i think well they're just, well, they're just a kid so they're not going to be so they're not yeah. going to be uh, like getting any surgery or anything mm -hmm. i think general affirmations need to come from society which is why I'm not pushing on like my just my kids. I'm pushing on society. I think that affirming someone's nature and not their identity needs to come from society as well. Because I think when it their, just comes from parents, society is pushing something else that will not have a net positive result. Their, their identity is their nature. I do not. I do not believe in any way, shape, or form you can like. Like I said, I, that you can that you can be sat down like since you were a baby to just believe that you're trans. Or believe that you're you're a woman that that'll just work. I don't think there's any research to show that. And actually, there's research to show that it won't work into like the greatest extent possible. I remember Ben Shapiro put this up in his video about trans people, where this one this one kid, this one boy had um a really bad um circumcision, and so they did like full gender reassignment surgery on him, and then he grew up as a as a as a girl, but he always had massive problems. Um, and then he and then he committed suicide. It seems like it seems like forcing someone's um, like forcing someone's um, uh, like a body mind to match their uh, body that you give them doesn't seem to work. But there seem to be better outcomes for people who take um, uh, like hormone like hormone replacement therapy for people who take puberty blockers for some people who like surgically transition. This seems to be just better. In every every way, shape, or form, every regard. Sure, in a time that the medical community is pushing it, like if if society is pushing everything to be true, but the parents aren't, then that would have a worse effect than society pushing something as true and parents pushing something as true. But it would be net better for both society and parents to be pushing it as not true, which is why this the methodology might prove as such, but it's using it in a time frame that the the influence is different and it has a different impact. Sure, that's, that's, like why, this, that's, that's why I'm not pushing on my to, kids. I'm pushing it as a societal view. I'm not pushing cool. it on like, but like just the kid, my kid who was forced to transition, they didn't really know. It just happened to them and they were having massive incongruities. It seems like that identity is not like societal. It's their nature. That's who they are. Like fundamentally as a human being, that is their nature. You're trying to separate that some for you're trying to separate slice off pieces of their nature that you don't like to say to try and replace it with something else this is always their nature that's always who they are you cannot separate from that from them that's immutable to their characteristics same way me or you can't be put in a chamber since we're a baby and then be like conversion therapy into being women same way trans people can't be like converted into being like cis that it doesn't work this way that's not how people work same, same way that um, uh, trans people still don't have the brains of that of a cis person. Uh, I don't know what that has to do with anything. Their brain, their brain's neuroplasticity is trying to frame it as such, but it can never reach the full conclusion. I, I don't know what that has to do with anything. It has to do with everything. If, you're, if your um, bo body is trying to frame something as such, but it's failing to do so, it can only get almost there but can never fully arrive there because there is an inherent difference between um that cis person and a male person pretend to be or trying i guess i have to use twitch words um saying they are a woman versus a biological woman oh okay i mean i think i think there's a difference between like um neurotypical women and women with depression the same way there's a difference between trans women and neurotypical women typically i don't know it just does just because they're they're 
they have different brain structures and like people with anxiety people with like depression people with like these sorts of mental conditions like uh, like gender dysphoria um their brains will always be different than neurotypical people because that's just a function of their brain that's how their brain works um it, 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 I, I don't I don't know what, what this means with with regards to anything. I don't know. There's a difference between short women and tall women, black women and white women, big booby and small booby and no booby women. Okay. Um, the difference would be um, what what is biological and what's not. Um, I guess I guess the pref the preface of the point would be I think it's impossible to have the conversation on a influential level without getting into the religion because i'm arriving such moral view from bible and i mean i can argue it from a secular perspective even if we look at like evolution and even if we believe evolution to be such um the bio, bio men are programmed to be want, wanting to pushing for, um, to have kids and to be looking for women that, that are good mates that they can have good children with if you look at like why men tend to like why like if you look at like why men tend to like um people that aren't as fat i mean you say it's because but sure, but like, let me stop you here because you're, you're gonna be going on a tangent as sure. you stated these people's brains are different fundamentally built different so what a cis man would want has no bearing on what a trans woman would want they are fundamentally different brain structures to to as, as you've admitted so i, I don't know what that has to do i don't know what that has to do with anything like i said we there's nothing to prove that you could take this person and make them cis and not believe that they're trans there's, there's nothing that you can do to this person I the last know. 200 years prior to the last 50 what are you talking about that's not that didn't happen the last 200 years prior to the last 50 anyone there, there were people that spoke up as such that would say that they um, feel deviation from the nat from societal tendencies, but usually they were pushed back to their nature. Like there isn't really, there, there's plenty of reference between time where people that um, thought that they were separated from so what society thought of them, if we're looking at it under that aspect, um, have conformed back to what I would believe to be a man or a woman because that, the inevitable truth is that you can like your brain can fully become that of a man or a woman if you, of that you were born as but it can never become that of a man or woman if you weren't born as that as seen by neuroplasticity research so what, do you, what do you mean by neuro so when you say like neuroplasticity research what are you what are you trying to say mm -hmm. like research has shown that you can that you can fundamentally rewrite a person's brain to to be like uh, like a, a man or woman you say this is something that we can do to people it can it can be um it can be made neuroplasticity makes it to where it can either be um like it can neuroplasticity is how your brain like the gray matter formulates to be something that like you like like if you're like like if you are wanting to be a woman you'll your brain will structure itself to simulate that of a woman because our brain is, is very malleable but it'll never fully reach that of a woman because of different areas in their brain that have been um that have just been structured to be that of biological but if we look at like someone that feels that they're different actually if you um if their brain has been mount has been changed by society to go to that of their nature i guess would be what i'm saying of their um biological status they can actually go back to what they are because that's how their brain is structured any any differentiation is manageable of that of like your like prefrontal cortex and certain certain areas of your brain but there's certain areas that are still structured for that biological pursuit, which you can look at from different research. Which so, I can where get that, after. so where did that original, where did that original like core feeling of feeling trans come from then? If not, so, so what you're trying to tell me is that these people weren't born trans. They just had some, they passing by at one point in their life, they had the idea of being a woman go by. And so then they internalized that. And then that nugget there, they used it to rewrite their entire brain into, into being trans. Is that right? Is that what you're telling me? Well, it's not always that often it's the state or parents being like, yes, you are trans, you are gay. It's, it's, it's often the societal push it's not always that but but this doesn't sometimes work it is. like as the research of the kid who was who was forced to transition before he even knew it that doesn't work 
it, it, that person they, they weren't even told that they were trans they were just growing up as a girl bot person person that know, was bought like, with yeah with the, with the botched circumcision they just grew up as a girl that it doesn't work we're right like they, they so it wasn't a botched circumcision and they grew up as a girl and then they off themselves wasn't that it where yeah. they were <laughs> That would reaffirm my idea that they can never re fully reach that of a woman, even no. if they grow up as a woman. It reaffirms that it. this person fundamentally <laughs> was not trans. And this reaffirms that the, this is the deepest form of conversion therapy that you could ever possibly imagine. Basically. Because if you can do conversion therapy in one way, you can do conversion therapy in another way. Like you said, con neuroplasticity, does, it does not just go in one direction. The ability for the brain to reform and make new connections does not go in just one direction. It goes in all directions. Right. This is the deepest the form of conversion therapy you can possibly imagine, and it right, didn't there's work. Part, there's parts of the brain that aren't that aren't malleable by gray matter. There's parts of the brains that aren't. The parts that, which is why you never fully arrive at that destination because your brain was structured as such to still um, structure itself as male or woman. If you look at like differentiation between male and female, female brain studies, if you're going to look at a lab coat for something, um, then that, that, would, that would be what you look at because it never, it never, the brain never reaches that of a woman because the parts that aren't malleable will remain the parts that don't have gray matter remain constant the parts that do can change so part of your so your brain will never fully reach something that it was never born to be i guess i don't think we disagree on that i think we're disagreeing on the idea that you're born to be something i mean the, I, guess. I mean all all research seems seems to point in that direction that <laughs> you are, your brain the structures of your brain that um, the the natural structures of your brain that make you like the color blue or wear wear frilly dress aren't something that you were really taught. There is just something in your brain that's the structures of your brain that you can't that don't really fundamentally change. Really, you can't just like rewrite some. You can't like brainwash someone like that into thinking that there's something that they're not. To, how would you explain the 17% uh, people identifying as LGBT plus when it's been normalized and our to our children and our education system? I mean, I was taught about it in kindergarten to like our media to like everything when it's been normalized that such an increase would happen only in that community most affected directly. Yeah. Oh, and someone pointed out something good. Like gender is a performance as well. Um, like this, the sort of like, but like the sort of things that go into like performing the gender that you would like to be are the things that I would I would say are like fundamentally performative. Um, but I like it, it's just it's just simply you're it's just more acceptance. I don't think there that there are typically more gay people in the world. I think that they're the, just about the same amount. There's just more who come out and more who are not like down low about it. Right. So why doesn't why doesn't it go up at other age groups if it's just more coming out? Um, you can you could have easily internalized not wanting to come out. Like if you I mean, live your even, whole life thinking that it's not okay, and everyone in your friend in your like immediate circle thinks that it's not okay, it seems like it seems like you would just like be able to internalize those feelings and not have and not come out and also like i'm pretty sure if like the research it has it has gone up for like some older some older age groups but like by a smaller amount by very slim margins and then i think it was i think baby boomers it like went up like 2014 and it went down again but like less than like a semi point it was it was a very small margin it was just those I mean, if, if it's something internalized by society because their brains are being changed when it's malleable, that's something you're recognizing that they've internalized it as such. I would question as to how your brain could not internalize something as like, you are a woman when you're a man. It could not internalize that. I don't know. I never, I never said that your brain increase. that your brain just um that that you're taught to be. Trans. I never, I never said that you're you're able to be taught to be like gay or something. I don't. I don't really, I don't really believe that. Like I said, there's lots of people who. I know. I'm saying you are. Okay. You were I, saying you were saying that like there's like like what you do you you like paint this boogeyman of like this guy in a secret 
this guy in a secret um CIA suit jumped in in the media and then he punched down the professor and then he started talking about his stuff like to mock the idea but it's true that the different unions um have conglomerated certain power in media even if you look at like which companies own like every media bashing outlet all the video game outlets all the cartoon outlets all the social media outlets different companies corporations if you look at such it is a conglomeration of power trying to become the new state i guess or become such a thing to where they're pushing this lgbt plus um notion that's causing such a sharp increase i don't find it coincidental that such a sharp increase ha happens at a time in which there's maybe like two companies i can think of that won't in the u.s that won't like put the pride logo maybe two i can think of that won't do that do do as such um cool i mean i don't think it's a i don't think it's coincidence either like i said it's more accepting so more people come out If it's okay, I mean, again, if it's more accepting, more people come out. I guess but the question would be the elder group. So you're saying that's because people have normalized it in the past. Would would the preface that the normalization of what is the difference between the? Oh, the also, that, just in case we we don't misunderstand. When I say don't come out, I don't mean that they're that they're fundamentally like not gay or something. I mean they do mm -hmm. all of the performances of like not a, of a straight person. And then repress those, and then repress those beliefs. Okay, so so you're saying Which isn't really so conversion. I, I question, why do you ahead. think it's not possible for someone to be taught to be gay? We think it's possible that someone can be taught to like internalize that they're not gay. Why do you think that's possible? I don't understand. Like, so what's the difference? So the would difference, be? the difference is like believing that you're not and not being. Um, those are two different things. A person can be gay, but never do anything with a with a man because they believe that they just shouldn't. That's not you not being gay. That's you not like engaging in any acts that we would identify with being homosexual. Those are those are two different things. Right, but you said you said that. I guess I think we're both agreeing. It's just that we're disagreeing that if someone can be born something. We're both saying that people can't be separated from what they were born as but um so we're, we're agreeing on the points we're disagreeing on what people can be born as because the crown jewel of liberalization is liberalism liberalize is a complete autonomous individual so i understand the grand scheme behind that but i don't understand the difference why do you think like people can't be taught to be gay is what i'm saying i guess i, I guess that just answered my own question um because you believe the gay thing to be biological or and trans to be biological. Um, so why do you preface it to be coming from biology and not preface the idea that it's straight people being taught to be gay? I guess would be my question. Um, I've, I've never, I've never seen any, any research ever that shows that you could taught, be taught to be gay. You can, it seems like if it seems like most people, I think, and it seems like, um, like through society, most, most people, if given the freedom would like mess around, um, a bit to like some extent with people of their, of their own gender. I think most people would without any like societal pressure on them. Um, like, like typically even, even if it's just like the, 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 the 90, 10 by thing, or you see like a really, or you'll, you're turned on by like a really nice, butt, even though it, it doesn't have like the, the, the person doesn't have like the same genitalia. I mean, like, it, I mean, it's, isn't that like a really big thing? Like back like a couple years ago where someone would show like where the meme would be like, there's a really nice butt and then they'd like zoom up and there'd be a dude with a beard and you'd be like, Hey, you know, I mean, yeah, some for some people just like ass is ass, and I think we're like turned on by like certain things, um, and we can like without any like cultural um, like push in any direction. I feel like most of us would would be perfectly fine for at least a, a little bit in some context being being rom romantically or sexually intimate with someone of the same. Gender okay, okay. I don't want to get too much in the religion aspect if you're not wanting to, but my question would be: Do you believe in? Um, I guess to frame my argument into understanding like why you are believing such so I can properly understand the points. Um, are you coming? Do you under, do you, um, believe evolution to occur throughout society? 
Ev what evolution of what the, or, what evolution of society or like, what are, uh, are you talking about uh, what evolution like do you believe throughout societal length that people that like do you believe in evolution i guess the, uh, the ideology of evolution that people um that certain genetic genes we have and certain um tendencies we have come from evolution sure okay so a question why, why would it be as such a different um that different people people before us what what, what would be the evolution art area argument as to why we're attracted to like skinny people or butts or whatever well what not all the... of us are well actually like the really with the with the really big boom of like thick girls and dad bods it seems like people aren't really that attracted to to skinny people in the way that um society would like us to believe that we are um who in society is wanting people to I mean, almost every corporation I can look at once is like pushing your ideology. So I don't. Um. Okay. For one, like, it, it depends to what extent and how. Um. Uh. And well, for one, it really depends on what extent. Like, virtue signaling is a massive thing. Like, that's a that's a leftist term. If you didn't know. Um. It. I. It, I mean, just because just because some companies so like a person who isn't double zero. Um, doesn't mean they're like all in the pot for these sorts of ideas nor fight for them. You just like see them It's like passing. It's like the very bare minimum you could possibly ever do which is just include those sort those types of people in this um, the, Literally the very bare minimum that you could possibly do um, I, I I don't know. It just seems like these things aren't really also like with by like Evolution takes an incredibly long time scale. Like some people try to use this uh, for the argument of like some slaves were like bred, so that's why, and so and that was the evolutionary traits there. I mean, or like this is why different groups, um, f like are are this like certain way of of like evolution, like here or there. Evolution is extremely long time period that changes uh, that changes people. People have been around for a hundred thousand years, right? It's not. It's. In no way has evolution been able to keep up with that time frame and the scale that we've that we've evolved. Like in a hundred years, we went from like horse drawn carriages to space travel. Evolution doesn't have time to keep up with any of that at all. And with and then what with regards to like skin tone and hair texture, these things like change very very quickly. Like very like small phenotypical changes change very quickly. I mean, I mean sure, not so much as like hair because the reason is that. The things that we care about, that being like the physical health of someone, is what we've been evolved to look for healthy people. Like we aren't looking for healthy people in their hair or what color, what how they paint their t their fingernails. It doesn't make sense. It want to be something you define in how you're trying to keep your gene line going. We're, well, we, I think it can. Status symbols. We're always really big. Set of symbols were always big when it comes to people. We're having gold jewelry. Um, I know in Indian cultures, like gold is still an extremely big thing. Like having like, or like the wedding ring is like something um, that, that's really big. Having good hair, like sometimes with the gal with guys when they're balding, people try to uh, be like they have low testosterone or something. That means they're like um, they're like not not good breeding po partners. Like these are these are really big things when it comes to like st status symbols are really big things when it comes to our desirability. As people, I mean, I think there's there's a we've been we've at least if we're approaching from an evolution perspective, we've evolved as such to keep our gene line going in such um things that we like, which is why I was trying to establish, I guess, that differentiation between like being evol evolving to like like something such as like, like physical health, because that's something that you've been evolved as such to fit, to continue on your gene pool. But something as such as, like, that has, like, no relevance to that is something that's more arbitrary. So I was more establishing the differentiation how, like, there's a difference between saying, I like people with short hair, I like people with long hair, and saying people, like, I like people that are fat, or I like people that think they're guys and aren't guys, or I, I like people that are guys. There's a difference between deciding things that are inherent to continuing your gene pool and, and signing things that are and deciding things that are arbitrary well like bigger well like bigger breasts were in women were seen as them being like more fertile when just we we know like biologically just some women just don't have big breasts and that doesn't mean that they're less fertile or less good at like even breastfeeding than like women with like bigger breasts 
So it, it this it just seem it doesn't seem to always track. I guess I'd have to look at the research of the history of people. I, that's such a obscure obscure obscurity. I don't really know how to conduct as such, but I don't think I think the clash comes that we we are both saying that if someone is something something they're born as, if they are born as something, any anything that goes against as such would be unhealthy. It's child abuse. It's not good. But and as such, you'd be putting them in a deep depression because you are making them mentally fight something that they are, and that wouldn't be good. The differentiation is I bought, I didn't buy the propaganda apparatus and you did. That's a differentiation. I think the difference is I have research to back up what I believe and you have feelings is, is the real research. Is the research I mean, not from the propaganda apparatus? Excuse me? Is the research not coming from the propaganda apparatus? I mean, it's really easy to dismiss everything that you don't like when everything you don't like comes from the thing that you defined as the propaganda apparatus. Um, I mean, it's really easy to believe one thing when you say I'm uh, everything is cringe except for me and I'm always right. I mean, so that true. is a way that you can go about the world. And then everything that you say, I could have started this entire conversation is every I say something like trans people are real and they're valid. And you say, no, actually, I have this study and I have that study. I'm like, well, I don't care because that's because that's from the propaganda apparatus of making trans people feel bad. Right. But I'm saying your natural disposition towards appealing towards studies comes from you knowing as such, not that your research is good, but rather that you know that the as such fields would reaffirm as such. And I think it comes from a differentiation of where we're arriving morals from. I mean, if we're looking at studies, I can... I could still argue that, but not something I'm prepared for right now, I guess. No, I mean, as, I, I as I've described like, several such. times, there you are... Can, you can th say there's consensus, but there's not. No, there. I, as I've described several times, there is an incentive to disprove the consensus. This happens all of the time. Um, just... Uh, it just not, gets, not, not when, the people, just gets not when the people saying the consensus is true are wanting like that to be disproved. Like, exists in like such a market to where um, like the people saying that consensus are true are actually looking for the truth like a something structured around the actual science like the constant search of the truth something where you question things that you know to be true then sure something that would disprove it would be m much more cost beneficiary but in such a society where anything that goes against something that like the postmodernist view of science where anything that goes against the consensus is wrong that would not work out that's no. just not true this is i i debunked this as well like with, when it comes to willpower being limited that was something that was consensus for a while and then it was debunked and now that whole uh, uh, that whole like um like it started as something right, that was that, that was didn't exist and then it branched this is like in the 2000s right because that was then a time when we we had postmodernist science when we weren't caring for finding the truth we were caring for finding a consensus that does not exist anymore if you find something disproving like the postmodernist view now there there really isn't much incentive to that there, people because people because that only that i think we're i think the only incentive could come from people wanting to find a truth but right now people aren't trying to find a truth they're trying to find something to believe in because that belief in god has been stripped from them Wait, and um, that 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 probably that probably be why like we it hasn't been very substantial. It comes down to something, I guess we can't you don't want to discuss. Um, it, it seems it seems like it seems like there is an incentive to debunk the consensus. It gains you a lot of popularity. It gains your um your research a lot of money. Um, all of the time for people who disagree, fund research op uh, for opposition of research that they don't like. Um, it just seems like it just doesn't bear out because we do a pretty good job when it comes to scientific consensus. At the end of the day, like numbers don't lie and your, your lies are going to be found out at some point in time. Um, and that's going to be pretty, people like want to be like researchers want to be correct. If they're debunked, like if something came out 
and it was like trans people actually transitioning leads to a 10 billion percent increase in 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 suicide and then you know what will happen they'll get news coverage for days they'll be invited on to every single uh, uh, uh like tv show there's going to be like a 60 minutes rolling about it there's going to be a documentary about it and that research is going to be combed through with a fine tooth comb over and over and over again and you know what if other re if other researchers come out with studies that are also peer researched and find this and it's replicated then you know what will happen All research is going to move that's how that works you get a lot of incentive from debunking the consensus um, this is just the idea that the consensus just exists and then you can't debunk it at all is just in, in, incredible. I mean, this has been like people have been debunking the consensus since you were since you would be killed for debunking the consensus. Like what happened to Galileo, who was like put in imprisonment for uh, for for um, going against the church's consensus. This has always happened. I don't know. It just seems like a really big conspiracy theory to to justify holding on to bad beliefs because you think that there's con that people don't want to hear the truth that you've already decided exists. Okay, so there's there's a couple things to address there. One would be, I guess, the idea would be the idea would be um, the incentive of consensus coming from people wanting to find something to be true. So the that would vary that would vary depending on the time, as if are people it dep it also depends on what the research is if it's something like disproving what people are believing to be true or if it's something proving what people are being true and if that arrives at a time when people are searching for the truth or not right now some people are are searching for something that they can uh, arrive meaning from I think that's generally true if you look at depression I don't I don't think that's something we d disagree on I mean maybe you do. I guess, do you disagree that people right now are trying to find, like, purpose? That's a common thing as of now. Um, sure. But I think that's, that, that can be due to us, like, having more time on our hands and um, being, being presented with more ways to live your life. I think people sometimes can, uh, can, can be shown to, when they're provided with more options, um, uh, they, are, they can be, like, less satisfied with what they pick. Um, sometimes, but it can also lead to greater fulfillment in, in what you do. So there are a lot of paths that we can take as people now. Like we have the being so interconnected, having so many things available to us. There's so many things that we can pick, but like sometimes you can, you can, uh, it's hard for you to find meaning. But yeah, lots of people are searching for meaning. I just think that's, that's a good thing because instead of tilling the fields until we die, we actually have time to sit and ponder. Okay. But look, I think, I think the, the point matters as to whether people are people are accepting consensus because people the reason that people are like accepting consensus is because they're looking for meaning in something different because something has like dissatisfied them. So it depends on the time frame as such that um, something disproving consensus would work. And right now, it, the structure of such is not done so because the structure as such has been done to where the counterculture of liberalism has been so accepted that. The, an unconsensus would not be going along with the emotional procl proclivities when the um, emotional arguments of trying to find purpose is already on that side. So that would not work out. But I guess I'd have to wrap this up because my phone really like at one percent, dude. Sure, sure. Also, but I mean, it seems it seems the same thing back when people were like very hyper religious. People were going against. People didn't want people to go against the church because this is what gave people complete and total meaning. Um, and so it, during those days, it seemed like we'd see, be seeing the same thing, but we didn't. People were always going against the consensus. People were always fighting against it. Um, and we are in a different place now because of that. But, because um, of if fail, I guess my view would be failures of the um, fail, failure, failures on part mostly by the church to um, enforce emotional, because propaganda is not that hard, honestly. Um, it's not. Failure well, of the starting propaganda isn't that hard. Keeping it up to the point where people start to, you know, deviate from it is very hard. That's why fascist governments fail. Yeah, that's such a long discussion I can't have with my phone at one percent. But Are I, you I respect. Fascist? No. Okay. All right, bud. Listen, I know your phone's I, dying. Okay. Really, I, I respect. I respect you too. I appreciate it. Is there anything you want to wrap up with? No, I, I just think I, I think I understand your position and the part where the worldview disagrees as such, because I don't think, I don't think the logic 
is disagreeing as much as the worldview, I guess, would be. So also understanding your worldview much more. So I think it helped out much more to understand disagreement because I think it's much, I think it's very important to understand agreement. So I'll just say thank you. Yeah. And sure, bud. Shop. Listen, you, you got a lot of, you got a lot of grown to do. You're only 17. Find some research for what you believe. All right. I think he's gone. All right. It seems, it seems like he's gone. All right. Well, there you go. What do you all think? Uh, thank you, Comrade Flump. Uh, Spenny EX. Thank you, uh, Lamp Shamoda. Thank you, Drake, for the raid. I appreciate that. Um, Surprise, motherfucker. Uh, Killzone. Uh, thank you, everybody, for following, for joining the frenzy and being so incredibly pog. There you go. I feel like I was as bad as a seven. Hey, this, this is why you need to break up the, um, this is why it's really important to break up the, uh, um, the all right pipeline. Sure. I just like to ask sometimes it was, I don't know. I just think it was like really interesting. Like it was finally, I finally got the hit, you know, um, I got to see it in real time. I remember Sond was, um, Sond was having a, um, was putting together some research onto like what the core fundamental of conservatism was and i think we got to see a little bit of it firsthand when like finally pressed on on like the research for what you believe trying to pull something up from like 60 years ago and that's been like widely discredited and then going sure it's bad but other people lie too i think was like a pretty a pretty good like um what is it a pretty good um uh sort of um confirmation of of my belief of how lots of conservatives like at, at the end of the day when like push comes to shove uh when it comes to their like bad studies they'll just be like yeah i yeah i lied but other people lie too it's that sort of like cruel world it's that cruel world fallacy that i personally believe is really core to conservatives like coming out that like you can you can trample on as many people as possible as long as you like can get your way and you can like lie you can deflect you can do like this and that um is a cruel world other people are doing it too so why don't you just do it yourself um that i, that I really personally think is like super core to, um, to a lot of conservative beliefs if you like dig down into it for far enough <laughs> 